This is the mercenary, Garrison Creed. Catch my most recent interview with Drinking at Moa's podcast. All right, everybody, welcome to Drinking at Moe's, host Big Mo here. YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell because it helps me with that pain in the ass algorithm. We're pretty much anywhere you can get your podcasts. A little under the weather today, but I am excited to have with me Garrison Creed. How are you doing? How are we doing, my guy? I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Like I mentioned before we uh, hit record, I'm little jealousy of getting to be there for AEW tonight as as a fan and yeah I mean a- absolutely last minute so if anybody's been watching this video and kind of wondering why I'm holding the a video chat up to my ear is I'm a I'm at the uh, Rupp, uh, the Rupp Center here in Lexington Kentucky for AEW tonight and just like any other professional wrestling event it's uh it, it's boisterous it's loud it's packed we have a ton of people here uh us folks over at OVW have a whole, have a, a fair a fair section full of all of us guys over there uh, checking it out tonight. Uh, this is last minute thing that for me to come on and do, and uh, I might as well. I thought it was a great idea to come on in and do the podcast from here. Hey, that that is awesome! B- very great idea. I know. Before we get into some of my questions, they have a pretty uh, decent night tonight. They're going to have what many people probably think should have happened last week, but hey, we're getting it. Mark Briscoe versus Jay Lethal paying tribute to the late great Jay Briscoe. Uh, I'm preparing preparing myself to cry on that one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, with the recent events and uh, and, uh, Jay Briscoe's passing, uh, it's been an incredible, uh, incredibly emotional week for not, I mean, for fans, uh, for the wrestling community, uh, you know, hopes and prayers all for uh, for his daughters who are who are still uh, struggling uh, with their injuries and such. Uh, the wrestling community lost, you know, a truly good person. I mean, somebody who I just met uh, just earlier this year. Uh, he incredibly humble, down to earth, just just another another regular bloke that you want to go on out and have a drink with. And uh, such a great guy, just lost him way too early. Uh, so they're going to do. Uh, a great job tonight, you know, p- paying their respects, uh, having a, a great competitor in Jay Lethal and his brother Mark Briscoe on out here um, uh, to just to pay tribute. Uh, something yeah. that had to go through a lot of legalities with Warner Brothers to be allowed to be on TV, and they, you know, rightfully so, finally thought so. Hey, we we need this. The world needs this. The rest mm-hmm. of the needs this. So they're going to, to they're going to let it happen. And Mark Briscoe is now available uh, to work on Warner te- Television. That and that is awesome. I know when that news first came out, I was really excited. But you know, we'll go ahead and get right into some of my questions. I got my notes here. Some oh, I like to some I like to start off with everybody. What got you started as a fan? And then what got you started, you know, making the leap into the business? Because everybody's got their own story. Oh, yes. And uh just like me, I mean. Becoming a fan is probably a very similar story to as, as to everybody. Anybody who watches professional wrestling, they like the athleticism, they like the, uh, the, the musculature, they like the bright colors, they like the personalities, they like the characters. Uh, me personally, uh, it was the mid card of WCW. Coming, watching guys like uh, all these Mexican talents, like Rey Mysterio, like Moses and La Parca, watching Conan, watching guys like uh, Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, Chris Jericho, mm-hmm. uh, D- that's what hooked me. I mean, everybody loves Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin. You go far enough back, they like Hulk Hogan. I mean, yeah, they got no attention, uh, but those that solid WCW mid card is what uh, solidified me uh, and got my attention when it came to paying attention to professional wrestling. Uh, as for me, actually involved, that was a bit of a longer trip. I wasn't, uh, I really didn't uh, know any way to get into it. I got into the business later than most because I didn't know. I didn't know you went through a school. I didn't know you. It was more prevalent than it was. I didn't know anything about the independence. Um, 
So I'm at the gym one day and I hear somebody giving somebody else a hard time about being a big time professional wrestler. And I just, I didn't recognize the guy. I just went on up to him in the locker room. I was like, so you do this professional wrestling thing. Uh, begrudgingly, he took a little scratch piece of paper, wrote down the name, uh, Shane Hills, and, uh, and, a, and told me, hey, give this guy a call. And I did. And uh, two weeks later, I'm in a, I'm in a hobby farm that has a professional wrestling ring in the barn and I'm taking bumps and run, running the ropes and then pretty much getting the crap kicked out of me and learning to become a professional wrestler. Yep. That, that is one hell of a story. You know, not everybody gets in it right away. Not everybody gets in and starts training at such an early age. Like, yo, know, people going right now with uh, Nick I, Wayne. I, I, I was, and- I was already at the very overly ripe age of 32. <laughs> Hey, DDP didn't get started right away. He got started, you know, in ring at a relatively Abs- older absolutely. Age. He got into the ring at thirty five. So I mean, I kind of, I kind of take on that. I, I, I think of the guys like him and Dave Batista who got in later, and I, uh, I look at his as an encouragement. Here I am. I'm at the cusp of turning thirty nine, and I feel like I got another twenty years to go. Hey, I turn, I turned forty in July. So I mean, I'm right. <laughs> but you know there there are people that get in and have relatively great careers that you know not jump in and right away like some people like go uh, some of the notable ones there, there, start there's with- a um there's a curing process there's a there's a bit you gotta be, you gotta you gotta have your head screwed on right or wrong um and, and you gotta have a, a type of mental maturity a mental yeah. toughness to go along with it. Uh, oh. Some people, it happens at a very young age. Uh, some, it, it, it takes a while. And I'll, I'll be the first one to admit that I wasn't able to pull my head out of my ass until I was at a much later date. So, I mean, that's that's the way it is. Yeah, no, that's the way it happens sometimes. And I was kind of curious. Looking at some of the in-ring pictures and seeing some of the matches, you have a definitely what i consider a pretty cool look in the ring and the how did you come up with your in-ring persona because everybody has a different way of uh coming up with that it, it isn't a persona brother it's me well that and you know what that is the way that is often the way people say the best ones are they're just an extension of that actual person just maybe turned up a notch uh in my in my case i'm turned down um Um, okay i i am a military combat veteran uh i have um i've done multiple tours overseas i've done some things i've done a lot of things Uh, i lived through a lot of things and on top of that, uh, on top of my uh, completion of my contract for the government, I went and worked freelance for, for a while, for a short, short bit of time. Oh, okay. um, I've never thought of myself different than a contracted worker, because even every soldier in the U.S. military signs a, a, a contract, either yep. four, five, six, eight years, 20 years, uh, to do what they do. That's the way I looked at it. Yep. Um, I'm not shy to say, I'm not shy uh, when I say I'm not a patriot, uh, I'm not a red, white, and blue poster boy, I signed up to do a job, and I learned how to do it very well. I'm just carrying that and uh, my characterization and who I am uh, into professional wrestling because the rest of society didn't really take that type of straightforward head, head, uh, headstrongness uh, into the regular job force. And I found myself a career that no, not only will allow it, but accepts it and craves it. Uh, yep. So I go on out there. You see the face paint. Uh, you see the schmog uh, draped over my head. Uh, you see this. Uh, I'm gonna run a hole through you, demeanor through my eyes. That's that is Garrison Creed. That's the mercenary. That is what you you got, and that's what you're going to see. That is awesome. That very intense. The the intensity is definitely what draws me in as a fan. Those those people that. You definitely say ooze that intensity. And you mentioned military. Myself, a fellow military veteran, myself, Navy. What branch were you in again? I'm trying to remember. I was in the uh, Army, 11 Bravo, Infantry. Nice. 
I was a cryptologic technician, basically making sure missiles didn't hit my ship. And <laughs> we, Good, we, we, I called them in too. Yeah, we, we often joke that if you saw us running, you might as well follow us because we're fucked. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I got roadside bomb stories that you wouldn't believe. Oh, <laughs> I've got some stuff myself i remember being in bahrain right around the time the whole arab spring thing was starting yep. and i was having to control the entrance of my ship and we got word of car bombs and you know you could i vaguely remember hearing some stuff so oh, like we I got, had to I, shut I, it I, down I, I got my own issues with those car bombs <laughs> yeah oh for the rest of the time we were there, every time we passed by a car, I was looking like, "Okay, we're okay, we're good." Yep. And I bet, you, and I bet you, still today, you kind of still have that, you still have that tingle in the back of your neck anytime you uh, come by, a, like a, a car whose back axle is down, or it looks it looks like it's carrying a little extra weight, or that, oh, that, yeah. that nice hefty pile of garbage on the side of the room. Oh yeah, nope, definitely been there, but. uh, Going back towards wrestling, because, I mean, we could do a whole nother podcast on, you know, military stories. I, I got those for days. But you mentioned OVW. A lot of people my age will remember OVW back when they were WWE developmental, before the NXT days. What yes. is it like being there now? Uh, right now, it's got it's still a very much a developmental program, but it's a developmental program for TV. Uh, they they focus on uh, telling a story. They focus on being able to uh, run a match for TV, uh, TV segments. They run all through all cable television in Kentucky, as well as uh, on Fight TV. I was uh, gonna say. So I mean, they they have they run a really good ship. It's run uh, uh, professionally in the office by Al Snow. Uh, also, WWE Al- Al- is a uh, Doug Basham is also there to okay. head up the training, um, as long as uh, as well as uh, uh, OVW alumni, uh, Tony Gunn and Cashflow, who are also involved in uh, the training of the individuals. And the training goes on all during the week, four days. Uh, we have okay. TV on Thursdays. Uh, it, it's a uh, it's different. It's much different than the independence. Uh, independence, yeah. you wanted a different style. Here, uh, they want you. They want you to focus on the stories. Uh, they want you to focus on your character development and getting that in versus getting your shit in. Uh, yeah, that that's got a completely different uh, idea when it comes to doing television uh, for OVW. Um, and right now, I mean, we had a breakout star that joined the roster last year in uh, Layla Gray. Who will be here to uh, for AEW? She's also she's working for both companies as well. That that is awesome, and you bring up some great names. I've actually talked with Basham about possibly coming on. We just haven't nailed down a date yet, but I've caught some of the 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 product for OVW on Fight. I currently am a subscriber to Fight Plus, and man, they they got some good stuff. Gotta say, this last year, um, with a uh, with a couple of un- a couple of sponsor inclusions and such, uh, and a very well oiled uh, locker room, uh, the pace has picked up. Uh, the storylines have been uh, more character driven. Uh, the locker room itself is very um, very competitive. Yeah, I mean, they only run a two hour show every every week. And it's only so much TV time and everybody is busting their asses to try to get their five or six minutes uh, just to be on there. Uh, it's very good good to go. Uh, like I said, I mean, the guys in the locker room, they're well-oiled machines. Uh, anybody could pick up a spot and go uh, just like that. And it's it's paying off. Our, 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 houses, our houses are up. Our viewership is up. And uh, it, we're just doing a hell, a hell of a lot of business. And... I'm told we're we're expecting some big things uh, in some upcoming year and it's next summer, and uh, I can't wait to be a part of it. Oh, I I can imagine that sounds like it's going to be one exciting time to be a part of OVW. You know, and you've been not just there, but you know, a lot throughout the Midwest scene. 
I have two categories that I kind of round off things with where I name off some people, you know, going through, I use when putting my notes together, I use cage match a lot where I'll go to the matches. (laughs) Okay. And I'll go through and I'll be like, okay, who are some people that, you know, we would both know and the listeners would all know. So I came up with a list. You give me your thoughts on each person as short and sweet or however you want to make of it. I'll answer, I'll answer as appropriately as I can. All right. First off, Swoggle. Oh, um, an interesting cat. Um, if you're drinking with them, make sure you're paying attention to them. If you don't, your uh, shoelaces will be tied together. <laughs> I, um, I've I've heard that about him. He he's actually uh, he's actually a graduate of the program that I came out of much earlier, um, and he also runs his own uh, company and uh, and training program out of uh, Oshkosh, Wisconsin. I was gonna say that's where I had heard he had been running his own deal up there in Wisconsin. Sounds like they put on some pretty good stuff. I've seen. Clips here and there from, I uh, believe it was Ethan Page's uh, toy hunt vlogs. I've seen you know, clips from matches there. Pardon me, my, he, one of my dogs he, is acting crazy right now. He he runs he runs a fair a, a, a very solid monthly show, and then they usually have a very a very um, a well done wrestle con that they run yeah. around the springtime, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, in the Wisconsin area that brings in a bunch of big names. It's usually a big money project for them. And uh, it, uh, it usually does very well. That That is awesome. Next up, a guy that had his ties, very good friend of Swoggles, Brian Myers. Brian Myers. Um other than getting super kicked in the jaw and thrown on a battle royal, I, I really don't have much cross with him. Um, that, that's about my interaction with Brian Myers. I was going to say the match that I came across was, yeah, a battle royal. And, you know, you never know. Sometimes you might have a little, oh, excuse me. Wow. Like I said, getting that, over something that here. Was, that was a uh, that was the one and only time that I worked for a Hornswoggle for uh, for ACW. All right, yeah, and you know you, you bring up uh, battle royals like I was getting to before I sneeze. There, you never know <laughs> how much interaction you're going to have with different people because you know with as quick as some people get eliminated and how long others stay in. You could be very a very good amount of time with them, or you could uh, be like hey, oh, it, one of the bushwhackers it, back in the day where it could you be just a sprint or it could be a marathon. Definitely. Next one, a guy I'm kind of familiar with because he's done some work for my friends out at Warrior Wrestling, Jordan Cross. <laughs> uh I think I yeeted him about four or five times in my confrontation with him over at Warrior. <laughs> um, I, he's a he's a hardworking kid. Uh, I, I, I've come across him a number of times uh, between Warrior and Berwyn Championship Wrestling, and uh, he, he puts the work in. I just the one downside to him: he's maybe 140 pounds soaking wet. He's given up 100 pounds to me. Yep, I'm gonna throw you like a lawn dart. Sorry, kid. <laughs> Hey, hey, it happens. It happens in wrestling. I remember I was recently featured on the pre-show for uh, Warrior 26, where he actually ended up facing off against EC3. Another match where he was, you know, size-wise was a little mismatch, but still ended up being a pretty decent match. Right, I mean, but that's the, that's the story of professional wrestling. You can have those mismatches, and you might have uh, you know somebody surprise you. Oh, yep, no, that definitely happens. 
Next up, a guy that is the very big name on the Midwest scene, Jossie. Has to happen. Has to happen. I've, I've run across, I love Jossie. He's amazing. You, Ooh. If you want to see the best that the Midwest has to offer right now, look up Jossie. It's, yeah. it, we were, we actually just a couple of months ago ran into each other and, uh, he was describing to me a match. It was me and him. And I had to put my hand on his shoulder and tell him, hey, brother, we've never worked. We've never fought in the ring before. He was dreaming it, and he wants it to happen. So, hey, if we have any promotions out there, especially in the Midwest that are familiar with Jossie and Garrison Creed, book it. I, definitely a match I would love to see. And would love to be there in person for it in particular. Ah, damn. Big I money. Got, put asses in seats. Oh, yeah. My my wife and I got a Great Dane puppy right now, and she was kind of nibbling on me there. And, you know, Great Dane, it's like, she, even though she's only a puppy, she literally just about had my whole elbow in her mouth. So I was like, okay, <laughs> time to back up. Next up, I have kind of a random question category where I name off. I never know what I'm really going to put on until I put together my notes. The only yep. one I really ever keep is the very first one. Okay. Craziest in-match moment. The greatest in-ring in match moment. Your, your craziest in-match moment. My craziest in match moment, I, I, I really don't know if I have any crazy uh, in ring moments. Uh, I think the biggest one uh, was probably my uh, return match uh, to try to get my uh, Midwest All or my Midwest All Star Wrestling uh, Championship mat uh, title back. Um, uh, lore, uh, heavy metal lore up in Minnesota. Well, the match ended with the both of us. Now, now he. Now, heavy metal lore is about 6'8", 320. We, he's a monster of a man. And at one point, the both of us were standing on top of a turnbuckle. Me, I was standing more on the ring post. And he goozled me and chokeslammed me from up there. Oof. So the biggest ah shit moment ever was probably that. <laughs> uh, if you want the biggest personal uh, story that I ever had from, uh, from any of my matches. Oh, and by all means. It was my entrance uh, back and just recently uh, I just kind of, I just had a, had a heavy day about this recently uh, back in January to uh, January 17th, 2005, I was inv involved in one of those car bomb incidents that we were trying to joking about earlier. Yeah. And, a, and, and one of my buddies, one of my squad mates, uh, I didn't think was going to make it. The last time I saw him was on a stretcher. Fast forward to about four years ago, uh, I'm working for Pure Pro Wrestling up in Upper Mich uh, no, Lower Michigan, and I had my uh, I had a match set up with uh, Tommy Vendetta, ah. and I had a bunch of my first of the five hundred third buddies reach out to me. Hey, I live nearby. We're only a couple hours away. Uh, we're gonna come and be there. And uh, sure, shit, my music hits, and I have a whole front row of all uh, of my old platoon mates that I that I have worked with back overseas. I mean, that's already a, a heart-wrenching moment already, right? Oh, Let me yeah. Let it up a little bit more for you. As I went around and I reached out to these guys and gave them all hugs and everything because I hadn't seen them in a number of years, I turned the corner to the next front row, and there's my buddy that I last saw that was on a stretcher. He's oh. there with his son and one of his son's really close friends. And wow. I tell you what, when you got to go on out there, you got to be the, the curtain jerk of a show. And you see that right off the bat. I didn't know he was going to be there. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, yeah, you know, if he pays attention to this, Derek Harden, you're a shit. But I love I, you. <laughs> no, I can only imagine after the way things left off the last time you saw him and then getting to see him but unexpectedly like that. On top of already seeing other people that you served with after a long break, that's enough of a emotional roller coaster in its own, and then and then on top of it, just to kind of like 
you know, put the dagger in a little bit more. He kept taking his prosthetic leg off and trying to shove it in the ring for me to use. I'm kind of kicking it to the side, or not yet. <laughs> oh my God, that is awesome. <laughs> I, I, could, I just have the image in my head right now. That is too awesome. Next question. I always like to try to fit in some non-wrestling related ones. Dog okay. or cat person? Dog. More of a dog person myself. My wife and I currently have, I mentioned the Great Dane puppy. We also have two English Bulldogs right now. Love I, uh, them all to death. I have a, I have a uh, Husky Malamute mix. Uh, he's on the smaller end of the Malamute spectrum. So he's still about, still probably about 90 pounds. Yeah. All white, deep, dark brown eyes. He's a scary. He's a scary looking beast, but he's uh, he's just a big trouble. That that is very much my uh, my Great Dane puppy right now. She's you know she's still growing, and I know sooner or later I'm going to have to worry about her drinking out of the sink. Because my wife okay. and I had one where we did have to worry about that. I mean, Great Dane, you might have to worry about drinking water out of the rain gutters. But, yeah. Yep, we've we've been we've been there with our dogs, not so much, you know, high up, but you know, they'll definitely go over to the the rain gutters, you know, the drain coming down and just yep. be lapping that shit up. Yep. Next one. Music you like to listen to to, you know, either prepare for a match or just in general. Uh I'm I'm uh I maybe dabble a little bit into the metal. Uh, I'm definitely into like the hard rock, some classic rock. So you can catch a little bit of uh, 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 Megadeth. You can catch a lot of Megadeth in there. You can catch some Rammstein. Um, you can catch some Seether. Uh, recent, recently, I don't know why. I've been listening to a lot of The Doors. Uh, okay. Jim Morrison's got a thing. I don't know. I, I, I just... I, and I find myself listening to a lot of that uh, old, old stuff too. Um, sorry, um, okay. I'm, just, I'm solid into the rock genre, and I can't really get out of it. Especially as it, I get into the age, I'm I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of set in my ways and some things now. So uh, don't hit the dial. Don't turn it snow hip hop. <laughs> and it's in the country. Uh, I ain't listening to it. You just keep this old band in his rock, and I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Great stuff. I'm myself a little bit of everything. Like my my phone has a little bit of everything on it. Country, rock. I consider myself a bit of a autograph collector. I got okay, tons okay, of CDs. I can see that. Tons of CDs. I end up uh, one time went to one of my favorite country singers concerts Dirks Bentley and I was like I just wanted to see how close I could get because it was an all general admission show okay so yeah. I showed up crazy you want to get, get up front you want to get the, oh, best, yeah. the best experience possible oh yeah and I got there crazy early and ended up being like two people from the stage and at one point he was best spot, best oh, spot. It, it was amazing I was there's a little concrete path in the middle that had the barricade. And I remember at one point he, he yells out where his beer drinkers are at. And I'm just like, Whoa! and before I know it, he's pointing over in my direction. And I'm just like, he looking around, like he is not pointing at me. Fill him up. This guy right here, point out, fill him up. <laughs> and then, not only kind of going off of that, what you just said there, he end, before I know it, he ends up helping the security guys get me over the barricade. And before I know it, I'm <laughs> stopped getting a beer on stage with them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, that was pretty epic. And I actually, again, towards the end of the show, he ends up pointing at me and then he goes and, Gets 
takes the guitar from one of his guitar players that was playing it at the moment and then starts motioning for something to write with. And I'm like, oh, hell no. No. Oh. That, was, that was already epic enough. You No. I, I got a autographed electric guitar in my basement right now. Well, why that? Why is it in the basement? Why is it not like in Man a case King. on the wall in the living room, right I'm, next I'm, to the TV? It, it, it's a figure. Show that damn thing off to everybody. Oh, trust me, I'm getting stuff set up for my man cave right now, and that is going to be <laughs> centerpiece. Excellent, right there. That's a that's a centerpiece in itself. So right, not too far away from my signed ring worn Alex Cologne kick pads. <laughs> there we go. I actually found a picture of him in those kick pads. I'm gonna have like shadow boxed in there with it. I can't wait. There you go. You can have uh, you can have an epic setup for your man cave. No, oh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Last but not least, one other question that I like to feature more often than not: best advice for anybody wanting to get into wrestling. Be driven. Um, listen, listen to all advice, good advice, bad advice, somewhere in between advice, take it all in. You can always separate it, use it, discard it, whatever you want to do, but take it all in. Pay attention. Listen to everybody. Listen to old, listen to new. Watch the product. How are everybody, how is everybody doing things? What's selling? What's not selling? Um, it's a business. You got to constantly study it. If you're in any other field, you're seeing what everybody else is doing because everything's a competition. So if you want to make the most bang for your buck, you want to invest a little bit, you're only going to get a little bit. You want to invest your entire life, it can make your yeah. it, 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 take, take it all in. Uh, I'm, I'm involved a lot, a lot with these kids that are training in, in, in OVW, uh, up in uh, Ken Kennedy's Academy up in Minnesota, and of course up in uh, Shane Hills Dojo Payne up in uh, Wisconsin. Uh, I interact with these kids all the time. I get a lot of similar questions. And every time I look at them and go, pay attention to everything, and you drive. If you can't drive any, dig on deep and drive some more. It's a relentless business. You have to be more as relentless uh, to get what you want and make it happen. I Very good advice. And, you know, you bring up a very good point that I often bring up with uh, people that have asked me about enlisting. It's like, one, be driven because you're going to have the moments where you're going to wonder, what the fuck did I get myself into? And, and two, with uh, listening to everybody taking advice, good or bad, and just molding it all into, you know, how is it going to work for you to – do what you need to do and you know wrestling you're going to need to get in wrestling you're going to need to get through those times because not it's everybody it, is it, gonna... it, it, it's it's tough yeah. um like we we just we just brought we just brought up jay briscoe's passing uh, anybody that's been a fan or cross paths with them or any that know him this this was hard this yeah. last this last week has been hard um, so just like in the military, uh, when you lose a friend, it, it's, it, it's unbearable. Another thing I want to touch up on um, that I guess I can't, I, 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 I've, I've realized, but never really exactly realized there is fine. You got to find out who you are. Yeah. So you're going to go like in the military, you got to figure out what you're, what you're doing, what you're capable of, um, you, you, you just got to you, you got to find out you got to dig on deep and find out what kind of character you are, who you are and what you can and cannot do uh, when you're in professional wrestling. It's much the same thing because now you're depicting that in the entertainment aspect inside of a ring in front of hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands, and possibly millions of people. You need to know who you are yeah. and you need to project who that is. And I, I found so many similarities between having to do that while under fire and having to do that when the cameras are up. You know, you bring up a very good point because there are those similarities because, you know, when you're in the middle of everything 
you know, deployments and, you know, all the craziness that can happen on there, you know, that's one thing. And then you get, you know, I imagine I've only ever been, you know, little bit spots, you know, getting to walk somebody to the ring or something. But, you know, when you're out there, you're performing in the ring, you know, the lights are on you, the cameras are rolling, the crowd's eyes are on you. Yes. You're having very much in its own way, kind of similar to that. Yeah, very much so. I, they're looking at you. People are looking at you. That's either they're looking at you through a scope or they're looking at you through the TV. They're watching you. Yep. And, you know, you always got to, you know, got to learn and adapt. And, you know, military is constantly evolving, adapting thing, wrestling very much so with, you know, Same thing. Sometimes wrestling, wrestling is evolving, one. adapting on a daily basis too. Yep, very much so. Well, my dogs are looking like they're wanting to get outside and do their business. So, before we go, where can people find you social media wise so they can get their eyes on you if they don't already have them there? Very, very easy enough. I am on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Look up Garrison Creed, just the way it sounds. G-A-R-R-I-S-A-O-N-C-R-E-E-D. Uh, you also look that up on YouTube. You can get a whole plethora of my matches. Um, and it, I, I've been finding them even more and more, uh, getting uploaded more and more recently. So um, especially since my, you know, coming back from my most recent injury this past summer, uh, catch that stuff out. Uh, I've been on a tear. I, I'm, I'm better than ever. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling better. Please go on out, reach on out, send a message if you'd like, follow me. Uh, you can also catch me on Pro Wrestling Tees and Wrestle Merch. Uh, buy some shirts, all everything is awesome. And uh, please come on out, catch me live. You can catch me at OVW. You can catch me on uh, the occasional when I'm over at NWA. You can catch me up in Minnesota, Wisconsin, all across Illinois, down in Indiana, down in Kentucky. I got a couple of gigs coming up in Texas. Uh, Las Vegas, uh, Oklahoma. Follow me on social media. You'll see where I am. This uh, this old soldier operates locations worldwide. Awesome. We need to get you out here in Nebraska, Iowa area, because I wouldn't mind getting to, you know, I can travel, but, you know, getting, getting a family started, you know, with, you know, traveling can be kind of limited sometimes. Oh, absolutely. But, uh, Thank you for taking the time to talk to me tonight. You know, hey, I know thank, you, you got to. Hey, thank you very much, my man, for bringing me on. Uh, very much, greatly appreciated. Uh, any platform that I'm on, you know, it's more, it's more time for the people to see me. Good way to think about it. Well, I know you got a pretty eventful night ahead of you there at the uh, AEW taping. So, yep. if I'm if I'm I'll, going through, if I'm going off the ring bells, I think they're on their second match. All righty. Well, all right. That is about it. Thank you again. And uh, best of luck out there. All right. Take your easy, my man. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. I wanted to thank the sponsor today, Reaper Apparel. One to encourage everybody to break out of the comfort zone, live their best self, which I very much support. They got great apparel, hats, shirts, beanies hoodies, all that good shit. Be sure when you go on to reaperapparel.com, use the code DRINKIN for 10% off your order. Let's fucking go.